Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. Holly Shields here for Calcane TV, welcoming you all to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. The show will be bringing to you industry leaders, successful business owners and market experts all under one roof to help you discover the latest economic insights. Today we're joined by Mr. Tom Balkanis, top influencer in marketing and communications at Savvy SME, the pioneer marketing and communications firm running services to small and medium-sized businesses. Welcome to the show, Tom. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks, Holly. It's great to be here. It's great to have you on. So first of all, could you tell us what marketing strategies you follow to connect businesses to quality customers and vendors? Uh, the marketing strategies I follow vary from business to business, um, but I think you have to have a holistic perspective. Uh, for example, for a fruit uh, company that I, I work for, uh, we look at marketing direct to customers using social media such as Instagram, Facebook, etc. But we also want to market to our suppliers and supply chains using LinkedIn. So digital marketing has to sort of have two paths in that respect. But for most businesses, there might be a B2B component or there might be a B2C component or, or both. And you really have to um, be aware of that and then set your uh, targets accordingly. Right, so it completely depends on the type of business and their goals, I imagine. Yeah, um, it, it also depends on if you're a startup business, for example, you wanna have name recognition, you wanna have um, awareness. But if you're an established business, obviously maybe your target is growth or, or maybe you're pivoting into new sectors, especially around the pandemic. Um, a lot of businesses are moving away from retail and going um, into purely online. Uh, businesses. So it really is dependent on first you have to work, sort of work backwards. Where do you want to be? But then working backwards from there. So say you want 100 more customers, um, how are you going to reach them? Are you going to use social media? Do you find that email works best? Um, so it really have to, like anything in business, you really have to have a goal in mind first and then work backwards from there. Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. Now, in your expert opinion, how can businesses benefit the most through social commerce technology? Social commerce technology is really interesting, especially in fast moving consumer goods and retail. Um, I think everyone wants to be part of something. Um, working for, uh, as myself, working for a uh, luxury uh, alcohol company, a gin company, um, there's a very much a sense of local pride in that company. So we sort of zeroed in on that. And you could zero in on that using social media. You can get onto trends with with certain hashtags. Use Mailchimp, for example, to keep people in the loop. Um, and this can all be a holistic um, sort of approach. So I think with a lot of branding, isn't just something that a name that you put on a bottle and then you trust, but people want to also want to be a part of it too. So I think social media, the social commerce technology. Um, if you can facilitate that, I think half the job's done. That's really interesting and um, a very new perspective there. Now, what do you think makes a marketing company suitable for SMEs? I think, um, Holly, the marketing companies have to be on board with what your business values represents and what your mission is. I mean, a lot of marketing companies will sell you a lot of sizzle and not enough sausage. Um, for example, I went into a marketing company um, uh, a few weeks ago, before the lockdown, obviously, um, to talk to someone because I was just passing by. And um, I sat down and, and the receptionist said, you know, everyone's too busy to talk to you. And that really struck me because a potential customer work, walked out right then and there. So some uh, are you, marketing company isn't just after growing their own business, that they're willing to partner with you almost as an extension of your business. Um, having a, a lot of awards on the wall is great, but how is it going to benefit your business specifically? Um, and if they, if you can understand that, and if they can formulate some kind of strategy to help you both achieve that mutual goal together, um, I think that's where you um, get the most value out of a marketing company. It, it's no point a marketing company just throwing buzzwords at you and hoping something sticks um, you've got to see sustained growth. You've got to see sustained results. Um, marketing companies might come up and say, well, hey, we're going to put you on the latest technology. We're going to put you on MailChimp, et cetera, et cetera. But if there's not a, a clear path to 
to grab the goal that you're looking for then then sort of wasting time. so i think a um, marketing company has to really sit down with you and become almost an extension of your business in in when it comes to communicating your value to customers right i couldn't agree more tom you've absolutely uh, got the nail on the hammer there and um, also, uh, you mentioned that um, obviously they have to have a more personal relationship perhaps with the client to really understand what it is that they want to achieve. Now, um, mm -hmm. how, do you think that, uh, how do you think that plays out in terms of larger, larger companies as opposed to SMEs? I think, I think larger companies, um, there might be added layers of bureaucracy and and um, not enough communication between departments and things like that. And I think having a lean or an agile approach to business is, is, is good for any business, I think, um, especially in a fast moving marketplace. You really, if, if, if you wanna seize opportunities um, as, as a large business, um, you really, time is of the essence. And if there's a, a free flowing throughput of communication between the top and the bottom or autonomy between the top and the uh, if the top sort of trust the bottom, then I think a, a larger company can really benefit. And that's where I think small entrepreneurs and, and things like that can grow quite quickly. But then they might hit a limit um, because of that added compliance, bureaucracy, whatever that has to be. So I think having personal relationships is always important. Um, having as many relationships between the top and the bottom and having that constant communication, that, that's the key to everything, I think. That communication between the top and the bottom and and external stakeholders um it's just a matter of maintaining that communication because it can get lost i mean we have an abundant use of communication now we have aim we have email we have whatsapp we have skype and things like that and it's it's a matter of an analysis paralysis um stick to what works um because communication is as old as dirt you know um and if you get the fundamentals right with that communication i think that's where the value is right there. All right, really interesting point there. And there's obviously quite a big distinction, um, perhaps more than most people realize, especially when it comes to the size of the organization and their needs. Now we know that various social media platforms are used for digital marketing. So in your opinion, which platforms fetch the most traction to businesses and why? Um, yeah, I think there is a limit to what social media can do as a catch-all. I think now it's all algorithmically driven. You have to dump a lot of money into Facebook and Instagram and things like that. You can get a lot of notoriety very quickly on on, on uh, platforms like TikTok. But at the end of the day, how are you converting that, customer, that person who's looking at your or your content into a customer? How do you how do you drive that loyalty? It's great to have likes, it's great, great to have clicks, but are they coming through the door? Or are they clicking um, uh, 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 empty your cart? So it, it, having a, a real strategy, a real sales funnel, putting them along the way to be in a position to buy from you or, or sign up to your course or sign up to your, your um, offering is really the key notion. And, and the thing is, you, you're not always selling. I mean, some, I think, Authenticity goes a very long way. Uh, you don't always have to be selling something. Uh, people can smell it a mile off. Um, and I think there has to be a pivot from people saying, okay, we're a company that's using social media to also being a content creation uh, business as well. So investing in that, not just doing it as a piecemeal and then I'll do one here today and then forgetting about it two weeks later. I don't think that cuts it. If you really want to make a cut through it, if you really want to build that, um, audience, you really have to be consistent and you have to almost pivot and think of yourself as a content creator. Very well said and obviously that content creation is a very big trend nowadays and it's obviously, as I'm sure you've seen, very well utilized by many businesses if they can get it right, that is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and some businesses, you don't think they're businesses, but they are. Um, I mean, look at the um, proliferation. I'm not sure if you're aware of, of the Sushi Mango crew who are a bit of a comedy troupe, but that, that is a business. Everything is a business. Um, they market products, they they market services, even they marketed um, the fruit shop that I work for um, in, as part of uh, one of their sketches. So it's all a holistic business strategy. Um, 
but no one is going to accuse us of um, selling something at that point. But that that is all part of the business strategy to create that content and get people involved. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more there. Now we're running out of time. So just before we wrap up, how should business owners frame their advertisement policies in your opinion? I think um, don't just chase uh, the trends or really, really have a think about the strategy and, and what you value, what is most value to you as a company. I mean, obviously the bottom line is the bottom line, but how do you generate that Val how do you promote that value to customers and how do you generate that that uh, revenue so if you have a big email list and you say you sell online courses that that is a big revenue driver you want people to be engaged in that way um are you a sort of a visual business where you're getting new lines in and you want to promote that product you know instagram and TikTok is always great for that i saw the other day um a business online uh pivoted to online they were a, a, a sweet shop and they were just on TikTok just showing how the, the, the suites were made and, and they got orders from all around the globe, generated massive interest. So sometimes you can stumble across some stuff. I mean, all this stuff is free. I mean, Instagram is, is free, uh, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, it doesn't cost you anything. See what works and if you can, and if um, you get some results, then pursue those leads and where they come into fruition. A very good point and definitely something to consider. On that note, that's just about all we have time for. So I've got to say thanks so much for joining us today, Tom. It's been great to hear insights. No problem. Thank you. Pleasure to have you on. Viewers, if you've just joined us, we've had a stellar discussion with Mr. Tom Belkanis of Savvy SME. You can catch this edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks on the Calkine channel later today. But for now, thanks for your time and stay tuned to Calkine TV for more live updates.